Over the course of the next few videos, we're going to start exploring cadences and asking the question, what is a cadence? What is a cadence? Because if we can understand what a cadence is and we can identify the different types of cadence that we find in music, that will really help us understand how the music is structured and how different musical ideas are working together. Essentially, cadences are all about musical endings. That might be the end of a musical phrase or a section of a piece of music or the entire piece of music altogether. And there are lots of different types of cadence which we'll go on to look at, but all of them give a sense that we've come to the end of something. It might be just a small part of the music or it might be a much bigger, more significant part of the music. I often think of cadences as being a bit like musical punctuation. If we think about when we're writing down English, we use things like commas, full stops, or even things like question marks and exclamation marks to just help guide the reader through our ideas. They're there to break our ideas up a little bit and give them a certain amount of structure. I mean, if you imagine writing that just carried on forever without any breaks, without any full stops, any capital letters, any commas, it would start to get quite difficult to follow and it would be difficult to communicate our ideas through our written language if all we did was write words in an endless long sort of stream of consciousness. So there's a reason why we use punctuation in written language and just like written language music needs these kind of structures to help us make sense of ideas as they unfold in any kind of composition. Now just the same way that there are lots of different types of punctuation mark in written language, we have quite a few different types of cadence that we use at different points in a musical structure. So some of them sound really final and finished, just like a full stop, saying that this is the end of a significant bit of the musical composition. Others are less final, like a comma, for example, that's just helping to divide up a bigger idea into smaller pieces. So when we talk about musical cadences, essentially what we're looking at is which chords are used as we get to the end of a particular phrase, section or composition. So have a listen to this, for example. Now that in fact sounded like a pretty complete piece of music in its own right, even though it was incredibly short. And if we look again at the chords that I played underneath the melody, what we had was a chord of C major followed by a chord of G major, followed by a chord of C major. Let me just show you that again a bit slower. So here's our starting chord, C major. And then at the end I play G major, followed by C major. Now that gives us this sense of a, a final ending that is closed and complete and finished. We're not expecting anything else to come. Now if I'd have played this, and just walked off, people might feel a little bit like I hadn't finished the piece properly because it didn't feel resolved like this. So it shows that the final chords that we use at the end of a little musical phrase or a bigger musical structure can make a big impact on how we hear that part of the music. Now I think we can say that that particular cadence, the movement from the chord of G to the chord of C, sounded pretty complete, final and finished. And we call that type of cadence a perfect cadence. So let's go ahead and look in a little bit more detail about what exactly happens when we have a perfect cadence. 